Good day to all of you. Welcome to EC Physics. Learn physics as easy as one, two, three. Through this video, we are going to discuss one application of Gauss theorem. It is to find out electric field due to an infinitely long straight conductor. Before watching this video, make sure that you have already watched part one of Gauss theorem in which we discussed about electric flux, Gauss theorem and its proof. Before we start the derivation, let us keep these values in your mind because we are going to use these in the derivation. Cos 0 value is 1, cos 90 is 0, cos 180 is minus 1. Curved surface area of cylinder can be found out by using the formula 2 pi r l. Dot product of two vectors will be a b cos theta where theta will be the angle between the two vectors a and b. Mathematical expression of Gauss theorem is phi is equal to integral e dot ds which is equal to q by epsilon 0 and q is equal to lambda times l. Lambda means linear charge density. So all these formulas has to be ready with you before we start the derivation. Now let us see how to find out electric field intensity due to an infinitely long straight charged wire. For that, we are going to consider an infinitely long straight wire which is given positive charge. In order to apply Gauss theorem, we have to consider a Gaussian surface, isn't it? Gaussian surface means what? It is nothing but a closed surface around a charge distribution such that the electric field intensity has single fixed value at every point on the surface. So here, the most suitable shape of Gaussian surface will be a cylinder in such a way that the straight conductor is passing through the axis of the cylinder. Let us consider R as the radius of the cylinder and L as the length of the cylinder. In order to apply Gauss theorem, we have to consider the surfaces, right? Here, I'm going to split the surface of this cylinder into three there are two cross-sectional areas and one curved area, right? I'm going to consider a small area segment A, which is lying on one of the cross-section. As we discussed in the previous video, area direction will be always perpendicular to the surface directed outwards. So direction of A can be marked this way, perpendicular directed outwards. Direction of electric field will be always away from positive charge. So electric field will be this way, away from positive charge. We are going to consider another area segment D, which is lying on the second cross section of the cylindrical surface. Its direction also will be perpendicular to the surface, directed outwards. Direction of electric field is going to be away from the positive charge. We can consider one more surface which is lying on the curved surface area of the cylinder. Let me name it as C. Its direction also will be perpendicular outwards. Direction of electric field is going to be away from positive charge. Hope these markings are very clear to all of you. Now we can apply Gauss theorem for this surface. What is Gauss theorem? Mathematical expression is phi is equal to integral surface integral e dot ds equal to q by epsilon 0. Here the total surface of the cylinder I'm going to split into three as we have done just now. So we can write the expression in terms of three terms. Right. So surface integral e dot ds can be written as surface integral e dot ds over the surface a plus surface integral e dot ds over the surface b plus surface integral e dot ds over the surface c. Now, e dot ds is equal to what? e ds cos theta. Let us look into the a part. Here, angle between e and ds is 90 degree, right? Look into the part b. Here also, angle between e and ds is 90 degree, whereas over the part c, angle between e and ds is zero. So this expression can be written as surface integral E D S cos 90 for the surface A plus E D S cos 90 for the surface B also because here also angle is going to be 90 plus for C 
it is going to be EDS cos 0. As we know, values of cos 90 is 0 and cos 0 is 1. So these two terms will get cancelled because their values are going to be 0. So the E dot DS will be equal to E D S over the surface C only. Cos 0 is 1, right? E being a constant can be taken outside the integral. So the equation becomes E into integral over the surface C DS. Integral of ds will be equal to total area. C means it is curved area. And we know that we have already studied in maths. Curved surface area of a cylinder will be 2 pi r l. Right? So we can write it as equal to e into 2 pi r l. So we got the value of this part. That is surface integral e dot ds is equal to 2 pi r l. Now we can find out the value of q by epsilon 0 and then equate them. Right? We know that Q by epsilon 0. Q is nothing but lambda into L, right? So in place of Q, you can write lambda into L, where lambda is what? It is linear charge density. So Q by epsilon 0 is lambda by lambda L by epsilon 0. Now you can equate E dot ds is E into 2 pi R L. Q into Q by epsilon 0 is lambda L by epsilon 0. So when you equate these, L and L gets cancelled from here. And we can write it in a proper format as this. E is equal to 1 by 2 pi epsilon 0 lambda divided by R. This is the value of electric field due to an infinitely long straight conductor. This is one of the very important derivation as far as board exams are concerned. Hope all of you understood how we reach the equation for electric field, right? In order to use the value of 1 by 4 per epsilon 0, we know it is a constant value, right? For that, to make it into that format, I'm going to just multiply and divide it with 2. So here also I'll multiply. So the equation can be rewritten in a proper format as 2 lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. This will help you while solving the problems because 1 by 4 per epsilon 0 value 9 into 10 raised to 9 can be substituted directly, right? In vector form, we can write because electric field is a vector, so vector E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, 2 lambda by R into R cap. R cap is a unit vector. Direction of electric field will be radially outwards if you are taking a positive line charge. The derivation we have done by taking a positive line charge, as we have seen, direction of electric field was radially outwards. If you have taken a negative charge, then the direction of field will be radially inwards. One more thing to be noted here is in the equation of electric field, we did not come across the value L. L stands for the size of the Gaussian surface, right? So in electric field uh, equation, L is not there, which means electric field intensity is independent of the size of the Gaussian surface, whereas E depends on R. R means it is the distance of the point of our consideration. So Gaussian surface should contain the point of consideration. Hope it is very clear. We have done the derivation of electric field, how to find out the value, and you all understood what is the direction of electric field due to infinitely long straight conductor. Hope this topic has become very, very easy now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead.